What's going on guys, Mike here. Today we got a bucket with a net over it. So you already know we're gonna be adding fish specifically to the jungle tank. So if you guys haven't seen that setup video, I'll put a link to it in the description. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. But without further ado, let's check out the two different types of fish that we're gonna be putting into this tank. First up, we have some Kurai Tetras. You might also know them as Royal Tetras or Purple Tetras. We have nine of them. They have this really nice kind of subtle purple hue to them. I think they're gonna look really good in this tank. And uh, we ended up getting one that looks a little crunk. Where is he? This guy right there. And so he was already in the bag. I ended up getting him for free, but I think he definitely needs a name. Uh, so let me know what you think we should call that dude in the comments below. Let's move over here to the other fish, which are just straight emperor tetras. And they look similar. These ones are a little bit larger. These are all male. They have some really nice yellow finage and a nice bright blue eye. I think they're gonna go together well. And uh, yeah, so we got four of those, or no, five of those. And I think that's gonna be a good starting point for this, uh, for this little 20 gallon tank. They've been floating up here for, you know, about 30 minutes. They're all temperature acclimated. So we're ready to put them in. I wanted to just do this right off the bat, not, you know, waste your guys' time with what we need to, you know, maintenance wise in the tank because for one, this tank doesn't really need a lot of maintenance. And so we're gonna talk about what's been going on in the tank, how all the plants are doing, how things look, just all that stuff once we get these fish in. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, so here we are actually two weeks after we first added the fish, okay? Things got a little busy, but you know, this way you get to see the tank mature a little bit more in the same video. So if you'll notice right off the bat, I mean the hair grass has spread a lot. Um, two weeks ago, the hair grass was fairly thin down here, but it was starting to move its way towards the center of the tank. And now, you know, it's just, it's just starting to fill in really nicely here. It's, uh, you know, it's really tall and I'm not trimming this stuff at all because this is kind of the feel that I want. Like over here where we, you know, when we first set up the tank, I'll show a picture of that here soon, but you know, we just put a few pieces in around these rocks on each side and then back here. And then it's just done this kind of this pretty nice job of filling in in the middle and that's exactly what I wanted. But I also don't wanna do any trimming on it because I like this look of having it kind of like spiral upwards. I just think it goes with the tank really well. If I did want to, you know, get a little bit more, more thick growth in here, I could just go in and do a, you know, a big trim on it and that would help promote that. But I'm thinking about leaving it the way it is. I don't know, let me know what you guys think of the look down in the comments below. All right, so now I'm gonna throw up a picture of what the tank looked like when we first set it up. Now, this was like two months ago, okay? So what we're looking at now is close to two months of growth, and the big thing that you'll notice besides the hair grass is that the moss has done a phenomenal job of filling in on the spider wood. And so this Christmas moss has done exactly what I wanted it to do. It's, you know, it takes a lot of maintenance to keep 
a moss healthy like this, basically to prevent it from growing a bunch of algae. And so what I've been doing to do that is doing some very, very light hydrogen peroxide sprays. I need to do a video on hydrogen peroxide because it can be a really great way to help stop algae from getting out of control and to prevent it. But you have to be very careful with it, especially on mosses because you can kill your moss really easily. And so if you look around at some of the pieces up here at the top, we can't really see because of the light, but I have done a little bit of damage to it. I don't recommend using hydrogen peroxide really on moss at all. You can get away with it with the technique that I use and I'll, I'll try and show you guys that here in an upcoming video. But yeah, the moss has done really, really well. And I think it, I think it just makes the tank look really, yeah, I mean, just it, the way that I wanted it to look, right? I think using Christmas moss was the right type of moss. We also used Java moss, though, remember? So the Java moss was placed in between the rocks, and you can see some of it back here, the way that that grows. Move fish. It's a little bit more spiky and pointed upwards back there. And you can see I actually, I put some back here as well. So you can see the, the way that the moss grows is a lot different and that wasn't what I wanted here on this wood. So um, overall, I think I picked the right thing, but you know, again, let me know what you think of that choice. The other plants that we put in this tank were the Japan clover over here on the left and the right side. There's been a lot of growth, especially over here on the left. We put a couple pieces where as over here, we just put one, but that's looking pretty good. And basically when you step back, you can't really see much of the Anubius Nana narrow leaf, which is back here in the top right and the top left by our HOB filter. When you get down on tank level, you can't really see much of it, but that's okay. You know, it's a place filler and it's doing, it's doing pretty well up here, even up at the top of the tank. So yeah, guys, I mean, this has been a super low maintenance tank for the most part. The only real issues that I've had with the tank since setting it up have been algae growing on the moss a little bit. And then I did have a surface film for a while that was a result of the spider wood. It leaches organics. You get those um, water insoluble organics that come up to the top. And it's a great place for bacteria to start to grow and consume that carbon. So I managed to eliminate that basically just with water changes, time, and then adding a pump, which you can see is back here, creating a little bit more surface agitation. The HOB over here just wasn't enough to get the whole tank sort of circulating with water. So the addition of that has helped and you know things are looking pretty good in here. When I first set up this tank, I did want to add some quarry cats to it. That was primarily the reason why I decided to go with a sand substrate. But of course, you know, I added dwarf hair grass and I, I was kind of assuming that it wouldn't do super great in this tank. I don't really know why I was assuming that, but because it's filled in here so much and it's just going to continue to do so, that's not exactly the best environment for a quarry cat. You know, they like to rummage around down in the substrate and if this hair grass gets any thicker, it'd be pretty tough to do that. I could keep quarries in here, but you know, I just don't think I will. I think what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna add some more of these Kurai Tetras and these um, Emperor Tetras. I think they're super cool guys, and I hope you enjoy them. I, I really just like their purple color. You know, it's hard to find a freshwater fish that has that, you know, that purple. And so, I don't know. I think I, I, think I did a pretty good job of picking, I don't know. But again, you know, let me know what you think. What would you have put in this tank? If, if you were me, I'm interested to hear, hear what you think. The tank isn't using any added furts. Uh, we are using CO2 though, that's off right now. And uh, actually the, the tank itself has the, you know, the Phoenix that's been on 24 seven mode. I have it on max right now. Um, basically it's, it's nighttime, but I want it to film. So that's why the lights on max, but the CO2 isn't on. But the 24 seven mode has been working super well. You know, the moss, up at the top isn't overwhelmed by it. Um, it might not be 100% ideal, but based on the growth of it and the way that it looks, um, I'd say that everything is just fine. You know, there's a little bit of algae that can grow on the four leaf clover. That's not uncommon. Um, I do, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I've been doing like weekly water changes on the tank and that's been, you know, helping a lot with algae and just like keeping everything in check. So uh, I think it's definitely time that we start thinking about adding some more fish. Uh, hopefully we can do that pretty soon. 
I don't want to add too many. We have, you know, we have a small filter on this, but we have so many plants in this tank. It's so plant heavy that I think, uh, I think that we can, we can at least add a couple more. But yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it for today's video. We added the fish. We did kind of like an update where we jumped around in the future and got to see the tank at a couple different points. Uh, let me know what you think of the scape down in the comments below. And let me know if you have any suggestions for what you want to see in the tank or if you want to see any kind of a rescape. I'm always down to hear what your guys' thoughts are and I appreciate all of them. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like if you like the tank. And we'll see you guys soon.